This was Forbidden Forest Winter Stroll. She was a deluxe doll, the most expensive doll in the Oz line to date. And then we had standouts like Goodness and Gossamer with this beautiful lighter makeup, pale blue eyes. I'm only missing one, so hopefully by the end of this video, one of you will offer me the last piece I'm missing. Um, and Robert, if you're watching, you were a huge part of that. I do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you, you changed my life. Hello and welcome to my doll room. My name is Jeremy Austin and today I'm going to take you on a tour of my Tonner Witches of Oz collection. I'd like to first thank Rachel Hoffman for allowing me to do this video. It has been a blast participating in this year's virtual doll convention. It is my first and definitely won't be my last. As you can see, I have most of the witches, the greenies as they're called in this case, front and center. This case holds all the green Wicked Witch of the West dolls, which were the beginning of my collection starting in 2005. I first became aware of these dolls in 2005 while attending New York Toy Fair. Um, I met Robert Tonner at that event and I was immediately drawn to these dolls. They were so beautiful. Um, being a longtime Wizard of Oz fan, I immediately latched on to them. Um, the Wicked Witch was always my favorite character in the original MGM film, so these were an obvious must-have for me. At that point, I had never um, seen a Tonner doll. I was aware of them after seeing ads and like doll reader and articles on them, but I had never seen one in person, and the size being 16 inches was definitely intriguing, kind of intimidating to be honest. Um, at that point, I only owned I was collecting some celebrity Mattel Barbies and like dolls. Space-wise, I was just kind of like, I don't know, should I, should I get these? They're, where am I going to put them? Um, but I did end up ordering one, and this was the one I got, which was the Basic Wicked Witch of 2005. Um, I ordered her out of probably Doll Reader. Uh, I remember I ordered her from Joe Blitman. And, you know, I called them up and gave them my credit card information. And, you know, a few weeks later, she arrived. And from there, I was hooked. Um, as you can tell, I had her signed years later at an event at the, what was it? It was the opening of the Tonner store in Kingston, New York. I had both Robert Tonner and Joe Petrolese, his lead designer, sign her. Um, and so she is one of my favorites. You know, she is the first. She's the one that started it all for me. I do love her, and she's always front and center in my collection. From that 2005 collection, we saw the dressed movie version, which is inspired, of course, by the Adrian design for Margaret Hamilton. And then we had separate outfits available that year, which included this beautiful My Fair Lady inspired gown with hat. We had this amazing winter duster coats in velvet called what was this one called this was forbidden forest winter stroll that one was winky guard reception and then we had this amazing purple kind of spanish inspired gown called witch's cotillion with this amazing beaded jewelry i do want to point out this amazing brooch this little insect brooch on her hat now this has been confirmed by designer joe petrolese that this is a nod to the Jitterbug, which was a song and dance number that was cut out of the original MGM film. I love little nods like this. I know Joe and Robert are both huge Wizard of Oz fans, so little Easter eggs in some of these fashions don't go unnoticed by me. I really love finding them. Later that year, we saw fashions like this one, which was called Winky Business, an amazing wool suit with tassel detail, little winky guard, staff, matching gray boots. This one's a personal favorite of mine. We had an amazing Christmas doll called Crimson Castle, which has this wicked witch with beautiful curly hair and stunning green glittery eyeshadow. Her companion doll, the Glinda, is also a knockout and I'll show you her later. Next year, we had dolls like Haunted Stroll, which originally was called Poison Ivy, but due to licensing issues with DC Comics, uh, it was later changed to Haunted Stroll. 
And then we had dress dolls like Emerald City Osmopolitan here. We had outfits like Witches Who Lunch, very much inspired by the musical Wicked, as you might can tell. We had this gorgeous silver basic, silver haired basic, wearing Griffin Splendor. Another movie nod is in the embroidery on her gown. This shows a griffin that matches the carving of the hourglass in the MGM film. Super cool. Then we had this standout called Taking Flight. She was a deluxe doll, the most expensive doll in the Oz line to date. She did come with this full skirt with monkey, flying monkey appliques. And then she also came with this snow globe with the Oz characters in it. We also saw another F.A.O. Schwartz exclusive called Cyclone Cantata which also takes reference from the Wicked Musical with this fitted inverted cyclone-like skirt. And then we had this amazing trunk set by F.A.O. Schwartz that came with, again, a dress Wicked Witch doll with the movie-accurate costume and this stunning, stunning uniform called Flying Monkey Legion, which is one of my personal favorites. It also came with this burgundy dressing gown. And this gown, again, a little Easter egg, it's not kind of confirmed, but I would bet money that the color is based on the witch's cushions on her throne in the castle. Same color, pretty amazing. Also the ruby slippers were available for purchase separately, which would fit all Tonner, Tyler size feet. And then eagle-eyed Elwyn collectors might notice this vanity, which was a Elwyn vanity that I custom painted years ago to go with my collection. Later in the years, we had Witchcraft, which was this beautiful doll with purple eyes. And that completes the greenies in my collection. Up here, we have some recent acquisitions. We have the very hard to find Winky Guard. We have a flying monkey. And then we have another basic Wicked Silver, who I have redressed in a more contemporary gown using some tonner pieces along with some Mattel accessories. All right, so we move on to my Glinda's. So originally I owned every single Wizard of Oz doll that Tonner had made, but around 2015, I started selling my collection because I was focusing on Sybarites. But earlier this year, I decided I wanted my Glinda's back. So this is what I've acquired so far along the last couple months. And I'm only missing one. So hopefully by the end of this video, one of you will offer me the last piece I'm missing. So to start, of course, we had the beautiful movie accurate Adrian Glenda gown with of course the iconic crown, wand, butterfly choker. This was a beautiful reproduction of the Adrian gown from the film. We had a basic, which this is the basics face. She originally did wore this little outfit with the pink boots. And then we had separate fashions available like this one, which was called Oz Gala. Had this amazing scepter, wand, and beautiful beaded hat and matching jewelry. Also in this first collection, we had Winter and Oz, which is this stunning white velvet teen kind of robe and cape set that had these amazing bell sleeves with matching fur, beautiful tiara and wand. Now I have a later 2007 basic wearing this outfit. Also note the beautiful silver poppy embroidery along the edge of the cape. I recently just received this gown and I have not been able to steam it yet. So please ignore the wrinkles. Also that year, we had the companion piece for the holiday doll, Crimson Castle. This Glinda is called Golden Gala Bubble Ballroom. And it is one of my favorites. It was the first Glinda to be done in a blonde hairstyle with, again, glittery eye makeup to match the Wicked Witch's green eye makeup. Beautiful jewels, beautiful gown, one of my favorites. The next year, we had dolls like Pink Ambassador. Well, 
Ambassador in Pink was her official title with her pink hair and all pink outfit. Kind of a play on the power suit of Oz, I'd say. We had outfits like Oz Rhapsody, which is a velvet burnout floral gown with these beautiful floral ribbon accents and beaded detail. This is another blonde basic available that year in 2006, wearing Oz Rhapsody. And then we had dolls like Blue Skies, which is heavily sought out by collectors. I just got her last week and she is stunning. This blue hair unique to this doll. Also kind of a nod to the Wicked Broadway show with the bubble gown being blue in that performance. And then we have pieces like Poppy Promenade, which was again an outfit sold separately, which has this amazing poppy theme with scepter, floral headpiece, and matching gown. And then we had standouts like Goodness and Gossamer with this beautiful lighter makeup, pale blue eyes, blue gossamer gown with silver detail, and this amazing long blonde hair with ribbon detail. And then one of my personal favorites, Reflections in Oz which I just love this gown so much. Uh, this is very reminiscent of early bomb illustrations. If you read the original Wizard of Oz books, Glinda is actually the Witch of the South, and she has this often depicted in this like, empire waist kind of gown, very similar to this. So I really do love this fashion. The hat is just a nice added touch, but... Again, hard to find fashion and I absolutely adore it. Then we have this doll. This Glinda is actually part of the ballet series. This doll is called Glinda and Point. She had kind of a ballerina version of the original movie costume, but I have her dressed in the original basic lingerie, waiting to be dressed in the one fashion I'm missing. So the one fashion I'm missing is from the original 2005 collection called Reception in the North. So that is the piece I'm missing. If anyone has it, please contact me. I will buy immediately. I would like to find it complete. So this is all my Glinda so far. Hope you enjoyed. Now we'll move on to some of my Emerald City ladies. Now I don't have a complete collection yet. I'm kind of slowly building on them. I have most of them. Now these dolls represent some of the women seen in the Emerald City scenes in the movie. And they're very movie accurate costumes. Super detailed. The trunk is a one of a kind trunk that I designed using a Tyler Wentworth gold trunk. This fashion is a original, not from the film, but is definitely inspired by the Emerald City. So these are my Oz dolls so far. Again, I'm rebuilding my collection, but it's been a blast. Um, collecting Tonner dolls for the last almost 20 years have been such a joy. I started collecting them at a time in my life where I was in need of different community, and I definitely found that in doll collecting. I've met some of my best friends through this hobby to this day, and it just continue to be a huge positive in my life. Um, and Robert, if you're watching, you were a huge part of that. I do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you, you changed my life and that's might sound corny, but it's true. Being at your conventions, being with like-minded people really gave me permission to be myself and I'll never forget that. And I do truly, truly appreciate you. Other than that, of my Tonners, I have a big Sybarite collection. That was my focus probably for the last 10 years. I love all dolls. I kind of am the type of collector that goes back and forth. I've collected everything from Monster High to Barbie to Sybarites to Tonner. Um, I've got some kind of unique one-offs and limited edition dolls that I enjoy just as much as my you know, mass-produced Monster High dolls. I've got some Integrity up here, the Amanda Lepore doll. I've got a, I don't collect vintage bar, but I love the reproductions and I mix them with vintage fashions and furniture. B 
behind there is one of my early 3D printed Mary Magpies by Joy Versa, very talented doll artist. I've got my one of a kind Jean-Paul Gaultier. He's done on a toner body. Got some mod Kens. So yeah, my collection just includes kind of what I like at the time. You know, I've been known to sell dolls and then rebuy them years later. Here we've got a Twiggy by Franklin Mint. Got a full collection of her. This is a fun one. I actually just got her out of storage. In my first Haunter convention, you can, I actually just found the badge for it. As you can see, it was in 2008. I was invited by my Tawner rep at the time, Cleo, and she was like, hey, we do a convention for collectors. Uh, this one's going to be in Boston or in Mass you know, Mass Boston, Massachusetts. Would you like to attend? And I was so excited. It was one of the first times I ever traveled by myself, and I decided to enter the doll competition, and this was my entry. Her name was Raven. I don't remember the theme. I'm assuming it would be Masquerade. But I actually walked away with both Robert's Choice and I believe People's Choice. I did not win Voter's Choice. Again, it was such a magical experience being there with doll people for the first time of my life. And then winning something was extra special. Here's my little Tawny. If you know, you know. Anyway, that's a kind of a quick tour of my doll room and my collection. Again, uh... I'm loving these Tonner Fest virtual doll convention. It's been a blast. I'm excited for next year. And everyone that's going to be attending the Chicago event with Robert and Rachel and Christopher, have a blast. Um, I'm jealous. I wish I could be there. Maybe next year. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a great one.